Once they see him, they respect him like he never left. Mike Tyson ain't never forget where he came from. We don't play no games. You live or die. How you gonna do it? We would, stay, we would hang out on the train station. Then we would shoot dice in the hallway. Everywhere in the world I go, they say, I've been to Brownsville just because you lived there. All over the world. <laughs> ah, Brownsville. Never ran, never will. He really kicking it with the people. Ain't a thousand people guarding him. He, he with the people who gotta respect him. It's only right that the baddest motherfucker that ever lived came from Brownville, Brooklyn. It's only right. right. It's rightfully so. The greatest fighter ever should be from Brownville, Brooklyn. Hey, this is another episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Mike Tyson. Today we got here is our man, Prince Jackson. With who, kid, of course. <laughs> ooh, kid. What's up, brother? How you doing? Uh, this is going to be interesting. Dude. Yeah, honor to be here for me. This is awesome. Thank you for having me. No good. Um, let me, I'm, how does it feel? I don't know. How does it feel being you? That's a very interesting question. Right mm. now, it's a beautiful day in Southern California. I'm eating the Mike Tyson, so <laughs> pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. No, but you must have had a very interesting life as a kid. Yeah, very, very interesting. And as I've gotten older, I've grown to appreciate how unique and interesting it was. It was, wow. uh, it's interesting, you know. I mean, have you ever been to Neverland? Yes, I have. So that was oh, my wow. home. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's pretty that. crazy. Well, when did no. you go? Man, I went late. It was late. It was like after trial. It was back then with Rodney Jurgens. Okay. We went over there and hung out. Awesome. So like 2005, 2006? It was around that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was around that time. There was animals and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's a zoo yeah. over there. It's a zoo. No, like like exotic, like tigers. Elephants, tigers, lions. Yeah. It was a zoo. Uh, yeah. A lot of primates, like monkeys, gorillas, orangutans. He really yes, loved, yeah. I mean, your dad really loved monkeys, huh? What, oh, what was the monkey them. thing? What, what was that about? He loved animals as a kid. Mm. You know, I think his first pets were two rats. Oh, yeah. Um, That's Ben. Yeah. Yeah, I'm no Ben, nigga. That's me, baby. You <laughs> used to play with them in the bathroom, right? 71, 72, yeah. something like that. Ben. The two of us. <laughs> Yo. You know, uh, play with the little mouse? Yeah, that's some hood stuff, man. Yeah, nigga. That's our pets, baby. Yeah. yeah. The little ones are cool. Not the rats in New York, the big ones. But the little tiny <laughs> I've ones seen are cute. those rats. They're huge. <laughs> it's scary. It's the New York dirty, rats right? is nuts. No, get out of here. Yo, that's great. Yeah, man. but then I guess as, you know, he was making more money, making more music. He was able to buy more animals, you know. And listen, I got dogs. eccentric. I had tigers on mm. mine. Yeah, yeah. Had big cats. They went and um, tore people's hands, hands off and stuff when I got rid of them. <laughs> dang, that. dang. Yeah, I mean, there's something about exotic animals that uh, it's enticing in a way. It's like having a relationship with something that I guess most people don't have a relationship with. And I'm, what was he like globally known to be the first to like have exotic animals? No, like, there's been people doing that since for, the but, beginning of show business. Yeah, but um, but I'm talking about like like being seen like on TV all the no, time. No being... one's no one's been seen more than him. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it had been done before. Like he had to find out, I guess, where to get these animals from because it's not like you'd call somebody up and be like, Yo, be "I good. want a tiger," right? I don't even know where he would go to call someone like that. Uh, but he had call to call Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Mike had a ball. <laughs> yeah, did you have a panther too, or you? Or you just yes, like, I did. Tigers are gangster. dangerous, but they're beautiful. They are. They are. Some cats are just like some cats will let you hang around them, but just don't get too familiar. Chill, you know. <laughs> yeah. get, hey, get a chill out. Nah. Yeah, they all have different personalities. We were in Vegas and we went to go see Siegfried and Now, Roy. wasn't that amazing? Amazing. What a great show that was. Shoot. Is that uh, one of them that got, like, yeah. by the tiger? Yeah. yeah. He's still alive? Yeah. 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 Oh, I thought they, they cloned him or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. What are you talking about, man? They be cloning him. They cloning him <laughs> no, they yeah. can't clone you, man. They can clone animals. He might be a clone. <laughs> <laughs> You start the YouTube joke. You know, <laughs> don't you hate that when you're on YouTube and it, both of you guys, there's like all these wild kill, clickbait stories. Yep. And the, I think you were in Mars one time. This is the, Me? You, you landed in Mars oh, and then you damn. came back. Like, there's all kinds of stuff with you guys. Yeah. Man. But I, I mean, I could imagine, right? Just I mean, crazy the, the, la the last podcast, we talked about the AIs and we played like Mike Tyson over like some other beat and Mike was kind of pissed off. But yeah. I'm I can imagine like people doing AI with you or your dad. Your dad must be super AI'd out. That's the interesting thing about it, right? Is the technology has grown so much that you can be recorded doing something that you never did. Yeah. But the interesting thing is what I've seen, at least with the AI for my dad, is 
he had something so magical in his voice mm-hmm. that I don't think that the computer has been able to capture just yet. But it's so interesting from the entertainment industry, the music side of things, right? Because what does that mean for artists moving forward? You know, do wow. you own your voice? It's just a very interesting conversation. And if anybody can and I, and plug I, it I, in. But listen, from a nature perspective, I should own my voice. Yes, yes. <laughs> just, just, just for actual living. A hundred percent. I should own this. Right? Does that make sense? Yes, 100%. I'm not being, I don't sound like a dick. Do no, 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 you sound no, like no, no. I'm not going to tell you that you sound like a dick either. It's a part of your brand, <laughs> you know, and at some point yeah. you need to be able to control that also moving forward, you know, because you can also recreate people mm. and AI. Like, they could have you in a boxing fight today yeah. and you never did it, you yeah. know, and it's just when very I should get paid for it. Exactly. It's your image and likeness. Yes. Hey, did, I agree 100%. Did you hear the weekend in Mike, um, the Mike Mike Jackson song? Yeah. I heard yep. it was like amazing. I've heard a lot of them. They're really good. They're really good. <laughs> do, is, is it safe to say the weekend is the closest to be like Mike and as far as singing? I mean, do you give him that I kind know, of respect? I that's the only one we heard. Let's try some other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm talking about like the weekend in general Overall. with his, with his career cuz obviously he I is know that guy influenced and, by and Mike. Silk Sonic is good too to Who's do that? it. What's that guy the Latin guy? Not not Bruno Mars but the other guy. Who um I don't know what you're talking about. Wow, what's his name again? Can we Google this? Help. He's got not Anderson Park. Yeah. yeah. He's good too. Yeah, yeah. I, I a lot I get this question a lot, right, when it comes to overall artistry, but nobody's really asked me vocally, like mm-hmm. specifically. I think the weekend is a really good comparison. I think it's apparent he was inspired by my dad, mm-hmm. you know, the way he sings, a lot of his music videos. But I, I think overall artistry, Beyonce has really been able to stay relevant yeah. and oh, wow. adapt with it. And she still performs at the peak of her career, like every time she performs. Is, is it a God thing? Like, because nobody, I mean, it has to be some kind of like spiritual like connection that gives you that kind of talent. You can't just, just go in there and start singing like that. Listen, People <clears throat> cry when they hear those songs. Mm-hmm. Everybody thought he was changing his skin because he, he wanted to be white. He was changing because he wanted to glow. <laughs> wanted to be a light. That's, yeah, that's the light story. Wanted to shine. Yeah. Holy. He told you that, huh? Did he tell you that? I remember Rodney. Yeah, he wanted to glow. He was the light. Interesting. Interesting. Light. I'm not gonna lie. When I when I first met Mike in Bahrain, I, and then he had like some white shorts. I didn't know his legs was gonna be white. Yeah. That bugged yeah. me out. I was like, what? That's the first thing. And he was like, hey. like he started laughing and stuff. But I was yeah, with him for like yeah. two days. And he really like everything is like like you said he's he, like he understood he understood life more than we thought he did. Who would think they can they want to be the light to glow? Mm. Who would think that? Nobody. He was definitely on a, another plane. When I was younger, you know, he was always explained to me speaking about that. Um, he had a skin condition called vitiligo. Yeah. It may have been an, a, a kind of an a, I don't know what the actual medical term is I'm so that is get so, into it. so i'm hearing from you that is real yeah. this is officially not a rumor yeah, you had that. yeah. I, I think it was even on the autopsy report you know okay. so there were things i think the cause of it there's uh it's up for speculation but it's either vitiligo or some form of lupus that contributed to the vitiligo mm. and he had a lot of insecurity around kind of looking blotchy in his oh. appearance so he wanted to see if he could you know smooth out his appearance to help with his security on his i guess physical appearance you know i think the glowing may have probably also had something to do with it because he was visionary i guess in the way that he thought right listen man it can't be a bigger god complex it can't be. <laughs> <laughs> mike is not far from that complex mike is uh, like a god to many individuals listen, out here. listen that what? sounds all good but we all in the 80s that's when everybody was big we all we, we all knew we weren't bigger than mike was. Mm. It's just the real. Oh, yeah. so yeah, 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 yeah. Bow down, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, <clears throat> very interesting. You know, we we're doing a lot of research. Personally, I'm doing a lot of research on him and just mm. learning a lot about his history. And there's so much to cover, right? It goes back to early '70s, late '60s. And when you see the performances and uh, like on the Bad Tour, the Dangerous Tour, mm. you see it from his perspective when he's looking out and it's just a sea of people watching him. And I always wondered. Doing that night after night, month after month, what what impact does that have on you? Super you know, deceit. to see a sea of people just singing your lyrics back to you and wanting to reach out and touch you, whatever it is, just being mesmerized. The impact of that has got to be very profound. <sighs> Was it, you think he, he would ever be desensitized with like years of seeing that? Like I have to believe so just because I grew up, it, you know, always being surrounded by fans and everything like that. So it wasn't really until... 
after he died and I became more uh, ingratiated into normal society mm. that I realized it wasn't normal, I guess, for everybody to be kind of surrounded by people. Uh, so, you know, he did that from when he was like six years old. He's been performing. And obviously the venues weren't as great when he was that age, right? But as he got older, Jackson 5, Jackson's, and then Michael Jackson, it... I think at some point, not that you became desensitized to it, but I think you become used to it. Mm. It's normal for you. So, so Mike, it's like you've been like every time you go in a ring, part of what? going through that crowd, millions looking at. Well, How does that um, feel? That's what I was prepared for. I loved mm. that shit. Like he loved it. Yeah, <laughs> the rush of being in front of all those people, right? That's a form of an addiction yeah. too, man. Yeah, it guaranteed. Is. Mm -hmm. Especially when you want to reach God status, then it becomes more than an addiction. <laughs> It's like a mission. You know what's crazy? Yeah. My, my, Mike Tyson brought this up in one of the podcasts about this infamous, maybe you could elaborate on one of these stories where I think Prince wanted to run down Mike. Yeah, the, he said. Um, talk about that, Mike. What's, what's that about? Rodney Jurgen was telling me that um, he said Prince was trying to run him over in the, in the <laughs> studio. And then my, and listen. <laughs> They thought he was crazy. I believed them. <laughs> I, I just believed them. I just believed them. I believed. I really believed them. I mean, it, 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 that's why it's bugged out to me because they had a rivalry with their careers, and then that infamous where he tricked him. He knew Prince was drunk in the back, made him come out. Yeah. You uh, with, on, on no, stage. you saw when he what, when he hugged Jim Brown. He yeah. Said, the Prince to come up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where where at? Where Prince? Hey Prince, get up here. And Prince was drunk out of his mind. And then I heard it was very like. No, he let some guy carry some guy, and he's on some big something monkey back, <laughs> and the guy brings him in. He starts singing and doing shit, and then when he leaves, he he grabs James Brown's, um, you know, his wall, and it's just a mess. <laughs> but I mean, but did Mike like Prince or? I don't think he disliked them, but he wanted Prince to know I'm the best ever. But it's bugged out that, that that's the rivalry that he names his first son Prince. Yeah. Well, interestingly enough, right? So that's I, crazy. You know, I wasn't around during that whole rivalry yeah. when he always spoke to me about Prince. Mm -hmm. It was with uh, competitive respect, I would say. You yeah, know, like he be. wasn't, like he said, he didn't dislike him, but always had that, I'm, I'm bigger than Prince. I was, yeah. you know, I was top of the world. The Prince was trying to challenge him. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was like the first, like, like Tupac Biggie beat. Yeah. Type situation for her, right? <laughs> R and B beef? But Hip, big. Rock star beef? Michael won though. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Michael won. <laughs> I'm biased, but I have to agree, you know. But actually I was named after my uh great grandfather on I think my grandma's side. His name yeah. is Prince. Mm. That's crazy. I saw something where you um got a little pissed off since we're talking about King of Pop. Um, Harry Styles, uh, you know, it was sometime last year. I think you were like kind of furious when you saw that. I don't think Harry Styles, I mean, Harry Styles is huge, but he hasn't done like the historical factor of being in the DNA of every human being. Yeah, like, yeah. There's a difference. Like, you could go to like Antarctica, somebody knows what Michael well, Jackson is. Well, it's different mm -hmm. now. Now it's different. We have, um, you can just, it depends on how many um, people watching you now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter how many records you sell. It matters how many people, even if you fail, how many people are watching you fail. That's all that matters, how many numbers you have. And I think it's frustrating, too, though, and you can probably attest to this, right? It's There are people that came before my generation, right, the technology generation, and they had to work their whole life, their ass off, to get to where they got to. And my generation now kind of expects it to be fast, quick. they get it You know, fast, because they but... see it. And I think it's so interesting to see and what's frustrating for me is not necessarily like harry styles is a great artist oh i love him he's, it's he's more cool. so about these media publications yeah. that try to take away the title uh that was really worked hard for and earned in a different time than we are today you know to your point there's people in remote villages that don't have access to saying. internet that who know who michael jackson is you know and that was before we had computers in our pockets exactly. to spread that information no people spread by mouth yes yes people are, and listen people in fucking different countries no electricity spread by mouth exactly great michael jackson great michael jackson the music right yeah. and no matter what language it was in they would sing it back as well and that's what my, that's what my father used to tell me when he'd go on tour in these all these other countries they really wouldn't speak english but they knew word for word the lyrics to his songs 
And he thought that that was so powerful. And he used that as an example to show the power of music because it could break down cultural and language barriers mm -hmm. because it was such a unifying message in all of his songs. Did he ever tell you he was the best ever? Yes. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to be humble about yeah. it, but, it's, you know, sometimes the pride would come up and he'd be like, your daddy was the greatest yeah. ever doing it. <laughs> I, I see you leaked like a lot of footage over the years, like it rare, like you know him reading like stories, like he's reading a book to you, and all. It's, I just can't, I just don't see that. Like when I met him, I felt like he was very conservative, like, and, and you know what I think? He wanted to see other black people because it was me, Tyson Beckford, we were all hanging with him. Yeah. But he finally said, like, I can imagine if Mike was there, he would switch up the way he talks. Oh yeah. But everybody, like the lawyers or the Arab princes, everybody talked to him and like, like they talked to him like soft, and he mm -hmm. talked back soft. And we were like, what the, <laughs> what the hell going on here? Like, and you know, then I he's think. He's just cool. Yeah, he was, you know, was bugged out. You know, he controlled his presence. He's just cool. But, yeah. But but he, but he the, the, the wildest thing is uh, this the screen came down. And, in, and on the screen, it was uh, a Shakira video on. But he didn't know who Shakira was. Was he always like in his own world? Like, he was like. Who's, who's that? I was nah, like, that's Shakira. He had, nah, he knows. He said like, it. He was like, I don't know. I was like, I got, I, I got, I got eyewitness account. He was like, who's that? I was like, that's Shakira. Like, <laughs> he, had, he, had, he, had, he had to know everybody. It, you know, he was constantly learning all new, different endeavors, right? Mm -hmm. He wanted to do film after he was done with music, and he was always reading about different, either animals. We had, he had an extensive book collection on llamas and exotic animals. I know. I, uh, I hate llamas. <laughs> <laughs> You ever been to Tibet? Uh, they do. One of them like farted on me when I was out there. I was so tired. I didn't even know they fart. I didn't even know animals fart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have dogs and they do. No, well, yeah. Dogs are human. They're, they're not Man, listen, about some of the jokes, they got mosquitoes this big. <laughs> Dang. You know, you know, uh, murderous out there. Yo. Yeah. My body don't have the, um, the immune system. I'll be fucked. <laughs> But we do have a lot of footage of uh, my father just being a dad. Mm. And I think it's a lot of, to your point, right, when how he controlled his presence, yeah. he understood the, the moniker King of Pop and I guess kind of the persona that came with that, you know. But you can't always be the King of Pop, you know. And no matter what, he was the King of Pop, mm. but the, the persona that it is. So when he's in his own home, when he's in Neverland, when, he's, when we were traveling with him, there's Michael, you know, Michael Jackson, the, the human. And I don't know how you balance the two personalities, you know, constantly being able to, especially because he could never go out, right? He would always be swarmed. And he just always... That? Imagine that. You can't think about nothing but yourself because yourself is your world. Ain't that some shit? Mm -hmm. The only thing you do is think about yourself. Wow. Right? And I, I think with a lot of celebrities nowadays, it's all about that brand management. You know, but I think that my dad felt he had been given a kind of a command from Would God. Would he understand that? Would he? He don't understand that brand stuff. Um, I think that he he was very ahead of his time, yeah. right? So would he use the term brand? I don't really know, but he would definitely, I think, speak to something of a personal brand and the importance of that. But when it he cared very much about his his brand, right, and what was put out there about him. But he was given, he felt he was given a command by God to give back to the world and give think, back to I the community. So too, and so that that all of his music, most of all of his tours were really more of a means to an end. The music was his passion. That was his career. Mm. But he used those tours to go and, you know, visit children's hospitals and yeah. orphanages. There's a, a book made by one of my father's fans, and it's literally just about his humanitarian efforts. Mm. So I was scrolling through it, and it's very detailed year by year. And it's it's hard to believe while you're reading it because you forget that he was on tour. He was visiting almost as many hospitals and orphanages as he was doing shows wow. while doing those shows. And it's just very, very crazy to try and comprehend that. That's amazing, man. And and then he did say you were in Bahrain. So you were in Bahrain. Yes. Lived, you lived out there. Yeah. What was that so, like? So, you know, Mike, let me tell you something. The, the you were was, there before? No, I, I, had to, I had to do Formula One, but Mike was there. That's where I first saw him on top of the thing. But the prince booked me to DJ Formula One, but I didn't know that I lost my passport, so I can't get home. Oh, lost your passport. You don't want to lose your passport out there. It's a wrap. Mm -hmm. So, oh, so I, he was like, come stay in my palace. So when I get there, I need, and I need, and a mic hey, was at been, the pool. It's past ten minutes. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to hurry up. 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 No, I'm trying to hurry up. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. 
So, yo, he just didn't tell me that Mike was there. I guess he got so much money, he didn't have to tell me Michael Jackson was living, like, yeah. next door. So I thought he was BSing, and then I see Mike come in. Oh, crazy. I was like, what? Have, so, you, have you ever saw him when he, he just finished a concert? So and you chilling in the car or wherever you're at. Just got off the concert, got in the car. I was born in '97, yeah. so the biggest kind of call it a regret is I never got to see him oh, perform. That must be. What? I did get to see him perform at Madison Square Garden okay. right before 9/11 for the, uh, the Jackson Five. Yeah, the when they reunion, came back. Yeah, right. That was and big too. Yeah, that was crazy. Everybody and was there. That was really cool to see. The memory I have of it is seeing the crowd oh. of people, and I only remember seeing a little bit. But then we got swarmed by the crowd. <laughs> And then you were seeing with Johnny Versace, um, Princess Diana, and all those people, Naomi, Naomi Campbell, they all they, they look beautiful. God, like, yeah, they yeah, big. It was uh, that, but so that was the only time I saw him perform, and I don't have a memory of him coming off of stage. But I was he was dancing constantly, uh, and when he was getting ready during the rehearsals for This mm. Is It, right, he would come home real late at night close to like 10 maybe exhausted, 11 yeah. but not exhausted because he didn't sleep so like he didn't go to sleep easily oh, and no. he would come home with he'd be physically like look exhausted he'd have a, a shake or eat a meal and go to working on music you know what? he'd go to his room start writing or harmonizing and melodizing to try and figure out another song so it was like rehearsal for the tour and then back to work on the music and constantly doing that. Was, was it easy for you to get masked up you didn't have to like you know how kids like they getting out the shadow of their dad is kind of like hard to keep how, up with how do they explain that to me <laughs> i mean how that's gonna happen right so they what are you gonna do become president 10 times in a row yeah no it's like, <laughs> out of the shadow. no i'm serious yeah but, but, yeah but i it's safe to say you didn't really have to deal with that because we didn't see you until after, you know, Mike kind of like passed away. So, exactly. So you didn't have that effect where, you know, publicly people keep seeing you and Mike, you and Mike, you and yeah, Mike. So yeah. now we expect you to sing. We expect you to do something. But you didn't have you didn't have to deal with that. I think it's who you talk to. You know, everybody kind of always expects that. Um, so my dad kept us out of the public eye. He wanted us to wear masks so people didn't know who we were so we could go out without mm -hmm. him and lead a normal life. But then after he passed, my grandma made the decision. She wanted us to just be normal. Mm. So she had to stop wearing these masks. Um, I think, you know, you always hear a lot of I don't want to be fucking normal. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have a short life of glory than a long in. life of oh, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're 10 uh, minutes in. We're good, man. I don't want to. <laughs> but when we... Uh... <laughs> I love Mike. I love this guy, man. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh my I want to be just like your dad. The whole world never forget my name. Yeah, yeah, and they won't. They yeah. won't. Yo, Mike, I'm tell them uh, your Michael Jackson experience. I know you, oh. you hung out with him. With you, <laughs> got to, man. Listen. You got to tell me this too. Hurry the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so, Don King got me to come to Cleveland because he said Mike Tyson, Mike um, Jackson, Michael Jackson performed, and he's my friend. I promoted his tour before. Mm. I said, get the fuck out of here. But then I found <laughs> out he did because he's lying all the fucking yeah, time. This yeah. guy. And so I'm going, I went to um, Cleveland with him. And so the studio um, auditorium is big. And he walks down the aisle, and I, Mike see him, and he goes like this to Michael, and Michael Ooh. goes like this. So I'm behind him, we're together, so I go like this. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm the heavyweight champion. I go like this, and Mike put his fucking hand down. <laughs> so I said in my mind, no, but listen, he's make up your mind. <laughs> he's about he's he's about five feet past, but he's on the stage, you know. And and he goes like this, and he's down his head, and I go like this, and he puts it down. <laughs> I said, did Mike just diss me? In my mind, in my mind, I'm saying, did Mike just diss me? And I said, my, he couldn't diss me. I'm Mike Tyson. How the fuck he diss me? I used to beat Michael Spinks, biggest fight in the world. So I go backstage with him. I'm done. And when I get backstage, all of his band members, the girls, the drummer gave me his stick, the girl that wow. danced at the blonde, hugs, and I'm taking pictures. Everybody's giving me attention. The band and everybody backstage. But Mike is sitting over there by the door. The door's open like he's waiting for somebody to pick him up. Mike this. No. <laughs> and so I go like that's happy to go over and say hi to Mike, man, because this is why I really came here. So I go over and I say, I put my hand out and he says, Where do I know you from? <laughs> I'm the biggest star in the world at that time. I beat Michael Spinks. I got the biggest 
person in the world at that time. Everybody knows me. I'm doing everything. And he said, where do I know you from? <laughs> I said, oh, shit, that's not right. But I said, no, it's okay, Mr. Jackson. I know by Mr. Fan. I said, and I never forgot that either. That's, gangster, that's crazy. Never that is crazy. That. Who you are. And he was just, everybody's all over me talking. He's over here like this. <laughs> He's just chilling. He's laughing on the corner. Yo, get out of here. Yo, Mike, that's That's, that's crazy. That's I was crazy. 20 years, 21 years old. I thought I was God. <laughs> You never met Jay-Z? Because I know Jay-Z brought Mike. He's one of the kind of like rappers that actually brought Mike out on stage. Yeah, it's interesting because I've had such a unique childhood, right? Mm. But And I met a lot of people when I was younger, but I was so young, I don't remember a lot That's of it. That's crazy. So it's possible I may have, but... I mean, you got a random photo with Jay-Z somewhere? Maybe, you know? I, I get I find videos on... That must be uh, fly, right? It the is, it is. I'm like, oh, damn, I forgot about that. Um, who who do you remember that's random and that, that people just you keep it like one of the I love? do like one of my earlier earlier memories is uh I think Beyonce came to visit my father one time. I'm not kidding. When I when she was really what? young and obviously Destiny I was really child. young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That culture of like uh like God like the godly artists. Do you listen to like all these new guys out here? Like, you know, like little like like little Nas X and uh, who else? Uh, I mean, we had him up here. Um, no, I'm like, just fly. <laughs> I like, yeah, like Meat yeah. Mill. Like, do you, do you turn up to that kind of stuff? Um, or are you a Drake guy? No, no, no. I mean, not no what? disrespect. No disrespect to Drake. You know, but <laughs> Mike, it, it, Drake what? Is kill out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all, he's also stayed another artist that stayed very relevant over his entire career. Entire he's career, kind of he's performing at the top of yeah, it, yeah. right? But. I grew up listening to oldies, man. I love mm. listening to you know oh, okay. soul, funk, R B and B. My dad has an incredible library, so that kind of keeps me busy. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> How many songs you got out there? Like like that's never coming out. Uh, well, that's an interesting conversation. But before that. You know, how does somebody keep your music? That's what trips me too. How come somebody is right? He does the beat, you see on the and he, music, and, they store and it's away. all hit. Yeah. yeah. Why can't I just get my part from singing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't that make sense? That's sense, right? Yeah, the. Uh... We gotta get Quincy up in. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a he's got a lot of songs that I never heard of before. Mm. He was featured on a lot of other songs with other artists, but also when he was younger, he was doing a lot of um, solo albums that I just recently discovered myself. Oh wow! It's very interesting, you know. But when it comes to unreleased music, there, as I've been told, I don't think my father ever learned how to read sheet music. So as a a trained musician, it was all really self taught. And when that translated to the way he would write music and create songs, there's actually maybe clips of it too, where he would do um, he would do like the beat with his mouth and his yeah. vocals for like Beat It or Billie Jean. He would sing the beat and then layer on the tracks over that. Mm. So what we have in our vault is, a, as I've been kind of told, is a lot of wor a really rough works in prog progress. So it's a lot of little snippets of uh, hee hee and stuff like that. You Come know? on, that must be the most famous ad. Hey, yeah, right. <laughs> Imagine hee hee. It's like Travis Scott. He'd be like, "All right, yeah, it's lit." <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it crazy that he's been like reaper? Like people, every comedian, every he's been like. I mean, people have been Mike. Like people like like those like those imposters and insane. Like it's insane. everywhere. Like yeah. But how can a man live like everybody? That? It's crazy. I mean? How many I, of them shows do you go to? Like you know, in in, in Vegas, the, the one in Vegas is like the, everybody oh. was crying in that shit. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that, oh, Did you man. cry, Mike? I cried. I don't care what. Yeah. Man, everybody. When the hologram know, came up. I cried. Yeah, I was yeah. yeah. Oh my god! And they saved that. Well, damn, I'm snitching. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been out for, it's actually, I think, we right. celebrated yeah, 10 yeah, okay, years. Okay, so, okay, okay. so yeah. it comes out at the end. So you don't see him. But when you see it at the end, it's, it's like, yeah. I just start crying. There's a white guy next to me. I hug him. <laughs> Y'all know Mike cried. There's no way Mike Absolutely. didn't cry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, they, they, they picked all the, like, the spiritual songs, mm -hmm. like, during the show where, you know, ah. Yeah. When you hear that, Mike, I know Mike cried at that one. Nigga, what the fuck? Ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> right? You think you know somebody and then this shit comes yeah. out. See what your father does, make shit come out of people. Oh my God. Yo. He's singing opera now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. How's your um? You, I heard you your your heal LA mission. You know, you give us a one on one on that, man. You're like uh, the co-founder. You're co-founder, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, 
you know, ever since I was really little, my father was trying to teach us how important it was to give back to the community, mm. um, to any cause, something, just to give back to the world because he felt that we were blessed, we were privileged with all that we had and that it's our duty to share that yeah. with other people. So ever since I was young, we've really been doing a lot of philanthropy throughout my life. And then when I went to college, I met the president of the foundation and the co-founder, and he had this idea of starting a foundation that was inspired by my father's Heal the World Foundation. Oh, wow. And the Heal the World Foundation was supposed to focus on homelessness, child mm. abuse, and child hunger on a global scale. We were a student service org, so we uh, wanted to focus on L.A., so that's how kind of Heal L.A. Oh, started. Wow, yeah. When we did, um, when I graduated and he graduated, we wanted to continue it, but we were looking back. I, I care a lot about impact. I don't like, you know, people who say, oh, I'm doing charity because I'm a good person. Look at me, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So we really cared more about impact than scale. We didn't care about hitting those, or we serviced 5,000 families. We cared more about changing an individual's life. And the... So when we became a nonprofit, we kind of changed our mission statement around. We recently changed it again. It's uh, to focus on the youth of greater Los Angeles by creating impactful programs that encourage them to chase their dreams while providing them fundamental life skills. And the inspiration for that is, you know, I grew up so privileged. I grew up in Neverland, you know what I mean? Then I lived Man. with the, the shake yeah. of the Middle Eastern I, I countries. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's very detached from reality. Disney. Disney. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Literally, Disneyland. But all that, throughout that, my father always took me to less privileged areas because he wanted to show me that it wasn't oh, normal wow. for us okay. to live like this. That's yeah. not how the world did. My wife is such the same way. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I, no, listen, it's funny that you say that. So I... I want to know, I was telling my wife, said, what is this? You know, we had a smaller house, and it was kind of crummy, too, but it was a nice house, you know? I mean, nobody complained, nobody yeah. bothered, nobody, and they were bigger houses. We had had the shittiest house in the neighborhood, right? <laughs> And I'm saying, all right, that's cool. Everything was cool. We didn't have to yell because we were close, and now we're in a bigger house, and it's wider, and it just looks like, nice. Whoa. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, that's what I'm saying to my kids. Every time we get money, we'll get a bigger house. Mm. You know, that's what I'm teaching them. Every time dad and mommy celebrates, we get a bigger house or something. That's gangster. No, that's not gangster. I think it is. That's not normal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not normal. Mom and dad are just tricking because they got insecurities. Mm -hmm. You know, but this is not normal. It's not normal. It's interesting to think about the message that you kind of send your kids, right? Yeah. Oh, Through your own behavior. When you get older, you start thinking, that, what's this mean? Mm -hmm. Now we get, every time we get make more money, we go get a bigger house. Psh. And we gotta scream even more, cause that's all we do is scream. <laughs> baby, Kiki, baby, baby. You gotta get intercom. Scream back. <laughs> yeah, baby, baby, Kiki, I'm hungry. Oh my god, I was doing research on on, on your joint, and then I, you know, I, I never knew that there was like age limits in foster homes. Uh, I, I mean, I'm assuming you, you can't be like an adult still being out. I, I think that's cool about your project you take care of people even after yeah that was process. something we did as a student service organization yeah. and that was probably one of the most rewarding things that we've done what is the, the foundation age how, how long do you i think technically it's 18 oh, where eight. do they sleep at and yeah. that's the that's one of the worst things is once the kid becomes 18 on some people will yes, foster leave. kids to yeah. get money because you get support from the government yeah. and there's oh, benefits okay. for it oh yeah, yeah. But as soon as the kid's 18, they say, we don't have a legal or moral obligation to you, so get out my house. No way. And so you have a lot of kids who are homeless yeah. at 18, and they don't know where to go. They don't have any family. Do you ever think about, hey, I'm going to prepare because I'm going to get kicked out when I'm 18, so by this time, I'm going to have this. <laughs> I'm sure somebody, somebody plays it like yeah. that. Maybe, you know, but. Um, do, do I rob this house before I get out? <laughs> I wait till they get all their money saved and put it in their hiding spot, rob the house, and break out. I mean, that definitely could be an option for some people, I you know, <laughs> we had a, we had one girl though, who she just had twins at yeah. 18 wow. and she got kicked out of her foster home. Ruthless. Exactly. And then there was uh, a nonprofit that we partnered with. Uh, I think it's called the sense of home. And what they did is, is they would find an apartment for the fam, for the aged out foster kid to live. And we raised money to provide furniture, TVs, tablets for the kids. Anybody ever dying in your, um, anybody ever dying in your guys' holding in your guys' built apartments, anything? 
our apartments? Yeah. We don't own any apartments. But, you know, I'm talking about in homeless situations. Oh, oh. They, OD, they OD, they die. Well, <laughs> it's not funny, but we had yeah. a, a really crazy experience when well, we were working life, with you know, homeless. I, I know about homeless. Yeah, yeah I mean, homeless. you probably have crazier stories than I do, yeah. to be honest. But we had a... We had a... We took a lot of college kids to Skid Row and really oh, wow. underfunded areas That's in there. Exactly. Well, a lot of our students oh, were yeah. <laughs> very privileged. Yeah. Listen, you yeah. start having a guy a conversation with a guy that's dwarfing you. You're like, oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, you see some her, a woman and her mother, and they're beautiful and young, and they, they're homeless. Mm. Yeah. They nowhere to go. He said, what the fuck is here? It's crazy. Mind-blowing. It's crazy. So yeah. eye-opening for them, right? You can't and, get a uh, shower. That's to clean, no. to clean yourself. Nuts. But while we were hand, we used to hand out um, personal hygiene bags, you know, toothbrush, floss, yeah. stuff like that. Um, two time on two separate occasions, one guy tried to run us off the road. Like we were on the sidewalk, climbed the curb on his truck, and we had to get out of the way. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. And then we saw another time, some dude literally got stabbed right in fr- while he was taking a bag from us. Somebody came up behind him and hit him like three times. But he, the craziest thing. What? He didn't react. He walked it off. Like he was like, "We're like, are you okay, man?" He goes, "Yeah, I'm good." And then literally walked off, dude. It was the craziest thing. He like, was you high, up or man. Something? He was high. Was man. LA, crazy. Yeah, it was nuts. Yeah, nuts. They, they be superhuman out here. Yeah. Man. You know, it's not even funny, but when you see them defecating the street, it just bugged out to me. Like you see somebody Insane. just pull their pants down, start defecating, and then I'm like, we're in like the richest city. You know, in America, like yeah, but we like we like the what twenty seventh most happiest, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, something in that. Mm. Just, and just, that's just, why check it out. What what number we as far as happy check. nation <laughs> for real? In America, where do we rate in happiness? I guarantee you, L.A. is lower than America. I saw that recently. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, we're fifteenth. We're fifteen. All this money, we only fifteen. And people are defecating in the street. Yeah. And I think that's what the importance of having, mm. you know, uh, charitable endeavors or nonprofits is we have a large wealth gap here. Yeah. We're in this state specifically, we're the, I think, fifth or sixth largest economy. And you have $10 million houses right next to like Hoods. Section 8 projects. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, I, I'm, I'm too young to tell you I know what the issue is, yeah. but there is a gap that needs to be addressed. So that's we're just hoping to fill the gap and help people <clears throat> kind of as best as we can. Well, God bless you, man. We're glad <laughs> hey, we have you, you to you know fight the fight. You yeah. know? Is, is it like that? Is like all these companies getting together to go up against this machine of poverty? Is it like, I, how's that like? Nobody never asked that kind of question, though. I no. never heard that question. You go, you go, it's like you're going up against like all this stuff. There's like politics involved. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. Then don't, don't have like uh, an election or anything go down. Yeah. <laughs> Every time there's an election, a lot of things get done. And then when, elect, when, it, when it's over, it just back to normal. Yeah. Back to defecating again. I, you know, I don't, I don't, again, I don't think I know what even the core issue is. So it's mm. hard to generate a solution from it. It's the just. The core issue is no one cares. Yeah. And that's, wow. a, that's a big issue. problem. <clears throat> so that's why we like the idea of healing um, because to he- help someone heal is an act of care, is an act of kindness, and it's not something that's easy. I mean, you know, when my father used to go to children's hospitals and he would spend time with terminally ill children or people who were dying of very unique uh, illnesses. It's not something that's easy on the heart. And it's something mm. that he was always very happy to do. But when he, after he died, I used to go to the children's hospital uh, in L.A., and I would volunteer uh, with a program called Literally Healing. And we would just go and spend time with the kids, read books to them and stuff like that. And I only did that for like three times. Did your grandmother protect you as kids from the Hollywood and entertainment world? Like, you know, a lot of kids get lost in that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's... Yeah. It, that's a that's a very scary part of the industry. Yeah. Child that's actor, like, child stars. Yeah, yeah. Normally the parents take advantage of them. Exactly. Them money. Exactly. So my dad he used to kind of warn us about that. Talk a lot about Jackie Coogan. Uh, yeah, little child kid actor, right? Jackie they Coogan. made the Jackie Coogan law after that. Little Even kid. still, though. And then he got older. I remember mm-hmm. he was an older man. Playing. And had no money because his parents took it all. So they mm. created that law where you have to... Coogan yeah, Coogan accounts. We have a 10%, I think, of all income was goes he on, into those. Was he on the Rascals, too? I think so. I think so. My dad loved the little rascals, yeah. so that's how yeah, that's <laughs> he so always spanky. spoke about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, no, my grandma did a really great job. He'd been job around. He'd been in all kinds of like 1900s. Mm. Dang. These guys been vaudevillians and stuff. Look at that. Wow. Oh, man. 
Your grandmother. Oh, that's was Butch, like, right? Uh, that uh, little guy's uh, Butch. Part, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's not Butch. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not Jackie Coogan. You serious? Wow. That's crazy. Well, he's been doing this for a long time. That's crazy. But no, my grandma, she was uh, very pivotal in my kind of siblings and I's transition into from Neverland or Disneyland right into the real world in a way. And she's a devout Jehovah's Witness. So oh, wow. um, lots of very solid moral upbringing. Strict. You know? <laughs> yeah, strict for sure. Um, but. You know, I had the benefit of being raised for 12 years by my father, who was an incredible man. Mm. And he was raised by his mother. And after he died, she continued <clears throat> to raise us. My cousin TJ became our guardian. Oh, wow. So I had a lot of really great grounding role models to kind of, you know, with my father, I was given this big dream and these big goals. And he also gave me the tools to try and ground myself. And those tools were continued to be reinforced after he died mm. uh, with my grandma, with my cousin, and it's just, I'm very thankful for him. Very thankful for Who's him. Who's your favorite aunt? That's a, that's a, you can't, Everybody can't has answer one. that question. Everybody you know has I mean? one. Latoya, <laughs> come on. Jan is my favorite aunt. I was in your family. Iconic. <laughs> Iconic, right? She actually just finished her together again, yeah, too. I saw so it. That was my really wife cool. went there. How was you that? Did? How was that in LA, I think it was. How was it? LA, somewhere we were there. That was, that was a ludicrous, beautiful. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was great, yeah, right? Jan, it was beautiful. Yeah, went in the back and hollered at her children. No, we was chilling, but it was just beautiful. Okay. We all enjoyed ourselves. That's awesome. That's so awesome. It was I heard so, it, was it was sold out. It was big. You met Janet before, right? Yeah. 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 What's your story with Janet? She's like the second. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Janet is just angel, Let's go, Mike. Let's go, Mike. No, no. Listen, one day I was looking. Um, where was I? <clears throat> I was in Hawaii, and Rodney Jurgens lived next to me. He had um. Like a little, it's like a little chateau, mm -hmm. and Maui, and so they have chateaus next to each other yeah, on the yeah. beach, and so I was at one of the chateaus, and Janet was as well, and um, she's with Jermaine Dupree. Oh wow! So I walked down there, and I see Jermaine, and I saw him earlier, so I went back there to see him later in the afternoon, maybe early evening. He wasn't there. And then Janet had came out and said hi. That's good. And That's crazy. Asked me was that all right? And I said, yeah, I'm good. And then Rodney came up. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so I felt better, right? Yeah, I felt yeah. safe. I felt, <laughs> okay, we all know Rodney. We're cool. <clears throat> That's awesome. You know, I was, again, born in 97, so I'm damn near a baby, right? Yeah. But my dad used to talk, talk about you, and he would say, really? he said that you are, I knew two things about uh. you. You were a scary joker. He used to call people <laughs> jokers. No. Yeah. Not in a bad way, yeah. but just like, you know, he was like, joker, scary. Man. But yeah. also the kindest human being because yeah. he always used to talk about your pigeons. Yeah. And I think he felt oh, a similar wow. like kinship in that because he had the rats and you had the pigeons. Oh, wow. And it was. Uh... Yeah, that's just. Um... <laughs> that's hey, um, that is just my life. I just got some new birds. Really? Too. Oh, yeah. Snap. I love Go. birds. I love birds. <laughs> oh, man, I got some new birds. You guys. Oh, do pictures. We could probably put them on your thing. Right? Yeah, you see those dead meat? Uh, hold on, let me see if I That's get my crazy. Do you name them all? Uh, sometimes. I don't do that because well, if I get a, um, attach them and a hawk takes one, I don't Yeah, it's too hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, next thing you know, I got the fucking gun. All right, come on, motherfucker. I'm letting birds out. Go ahead, come on. <laughs> And I'm getting too into it. And, you know, listen. The next thing you know, somebody looks at me, see me shoot, and I got a case. <laughs> so I, I can't do that. Can't yeah. Do that. Bird gang. <laughs> so look at this. This is some of my birds. They're not coming out the first day. I love the case. So That's they, awesome. Oh, 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 look. Yeah. They're coming out. Wow. It's the first day out. These are my babies. <laughs> <laughs> And you feed them? Huh? Like you go in there and you feed them? Oh, absolutely. I do everything for them. Wow. Hey, you can see them all up there. Oh, you, gotta see, oh, you gotta see them flying, man. I love birds. I love. Oh birds. man, listen. So cool. I love birds. I, I can't live with. I, I can't. I can't live without. Can't live without. We call them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm that way. I can't live without them. Do you let them like fly, and that's them. how they get attacked by hawks? Yeah. So the, and they come back. Yeah. 
Mm. That's crazy. They fly over in the air till you can't see them no more. And then when do they come back? Uh, an hour. They really? They see them coming back. They roll out. <laughs> no. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Then the Hawks and the Falcons start trying to get them. Dang. What is that? That's in Brooklyn or you have one in Miami? Brooklyn. All in and Brooklyn. And then um, Vegas and I have a few Can you take me to one? I want to experience that. I see, if you can see documentaries. You, I'm going to touch one of your pictures. Listen, um, Close. <laughs> It has, to, it has to be in your blood. I started at such a young age, like seven, mm. eight. It's in my blood. I can't live without them. I'm going to be an old man, die, and I'm going to have a pigeon crew. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. Yo, give us a one-on-one on this uh, biopic coming out, man. What's Ooh. up, man? Oh, it's uh, very exciting. Very exciting. You involved? Yeah, yeah. Very much. So, huh? yeah, we. Um, I met with Graham <sighs> King, or I'm, I can't take no credit, Graham had actually known my family back in the 70s. He, when he came over here from England, he was uh, pumping gas for Jermaine at a Shell station down the street. <laughs> no way. And then he started off, you know, working uh, in the film industry, working with Martin Scorsese, mm, done uh, a lot of classic films, right? And then he did uh, Bohemian Rhapsody on Queen. My favorite movie. And it, it was amazing. Mm. It was amazing. But he uh, reached out to the, my father's estate and said he wanted to do a movie on uh my dad he felt like there was a real story to be told there okay and after shortly after that i met with him and i've kind of been uh learning from him in a way because it's another great way to learn underneath about, your dad. Uh, a, that's, that's uh, about my dad but yeah. also about the film industry from a oh. pro right a certified uh legend he's, he's like the king of bringing out like the anger and like you know you, you could tell in Rhapsody like you, you, you felt like the character like, yeah so he's, and he's, he's gonna bring that out like well it, what he does is in his approach to this storytelling um, what I've learned from stories I've heard about him from other people or just watching him work is he goes <clears throat> and he spends time with people getting their full story you know where they came from how they met my dad how they knew him and mm. what their relationship was like and he does all this information gathering and research to put together the most authentic fo- um, story and the character of who my father was. And so what was interesting for me, you know, I spent a lot of time speaking with Graham about the man that I knew as my father, which is not the king of pop, was not, you know, mm. the Michael Jackson. It was daddy to me. And he went and he met with all these other people who, you know, from my family members, his brothers, my uncles, to uh, people who toured with him, traveled with him, worked for him. And after I read the first draft of the script, I called him because I was crying afterwards. And I told him that he had the most authentic picture of my father. And I learned, not that I learned anything new Mm. about my dad, because it was all the iconic moments, which is very difficult to do, right? There's so much history there. You probably never knew everyone else knew that. Yes, yes. And the the person that I knew, it it kind of was like a, a light bulb for me in the sense that it put into effect how the man that I knew was the way he was because of his whole life story. And so it was nothing, you know, Billy Jean, Motown 25, doing the moonwalk for the first Mm -hmm. time, right? Everybody knows that story. I was Mm -hmm. told that story. I've seen the video, but when you have the A to B to C to D, and then you get to the end of the movie, it's, that was my dad. And that's, that's exactly who he is. So being involved on this journey of, getting all these awesome stories about my father and then putting them together into a cinematic story for the mm-hmm. general audience to really understand who he was as a human is just amazing. How long did, how long have you been working on a project? Like, like years in the making? It's been a while. Obviously Super the years. pandemic, right? Messed yeah. up everybody's schedule. Um, but I think I met Graham in like 2000, maybe 17 or 18. And from there, we've just been continuously having conversations and more and more pieces of the puzzle get put in there. He was like the first troller. Like, there was no there was no social media. He knew that when he went out there, he's going to cause a ripple out there with, I, his, with the whole world. I think world. that's a, a hell... I mean, I'm not a fan of the connotation of troll, yeah. but I think in the, um, <laughs> in the grand scheme of it, he understood the media to a certain extent, and mm-hmm. he understand how he could kind of play into that to increase his stardom. You know, an interesting story I actually just saw uh, about the Super Bowl in 93, it was. 
uh, when he pops up and he just stands there doing nothing. Yeah. Right? Like, and the crowd's going yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Insane. And the, black. Exactly, black. exactly. The interesting thing about it is, though, is they added in the crowd of sound effects. Mm. And oh, because really? the Super Bowl had never had a star like that perform mm. up until that time. Wow. And I think it's still, like, the most watched Super Bowl performance. Ever. And so when he came up and he just stood there, the audience thought it was a, a technical difficulty or a malfunction. So everybody was quiet. Mm. But they added in the audience performance, and that just added to the legend that is Michael Jackson now. <sighs> Open the doors, man. Now you see everybody yeah. out there. You see, like, freaking uh, Rihanna. Mm -hmm. I mean, Eminem, Dr. Dre. Like, they opened it. Like, that door right there. Everybody's doing Super Bowl. It, it, it completely changed that halftime performance. I mean, Jay Z got that job, man. Yeah. I know Mike goes to every Super Bowl. He knows Jay Z. <laughs> I don't go to no damn Super Bowl. Yeah, yo. <laughs> I went to one. <laughs> yeah, Mike. <buddy. laughs> no, one, the only person that um, invite me is Mr. Kraft, Bob Kraft, anybody else? Really? <laughs> Yo, you gotta change that, Mike. Yeah. What are we doing for Mike's birthday, man? Patriots all the way, Patriots. <laughs> Mike, is, Mike is tough. Thank you. What are we doing for August 29th, man? What are we doing, man? Is that Leo? Leo? Yeah, August 29th. Oh. Um, I don't really know, to be honest. Good, good. I didn't know my son, so I don't feel bad. I don't mm. feel bad. What? <laughs> you signed a Virgo. Oh, Virgo. Uh, Virgo. Uh, <laughs> for going. <laughs> what? And so he's a Virgo, August 29th. But we talked about the show out there in Vegas. That's yeah. uh, one of our shows, uh, the Cirque du Soleil one. It's 10 years for the show this yeah, year, but mm -hmm. we always do something to celebrate his birthday out there in Vegas. You guys are welcome to come yeah, if you want. I live in Vegas. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you should swing through. We go. Uh, what I think is happening this year is his birthday's on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Yeah. So Sunday we're gonna be doing. There's a this cool MJ experience. I've seen videos of it. I haven't been yet, but they have it to where you could do like the Billie Jean thing, where you step on the ground and it oh, lights right. up. Yeah. That oh, looks so okay. cool. So I want to try that. With the black, you know what I the mean? black leather outfit. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know. yeah. I don't think shoes. it was leather, but you know, it was yeah. a black leather outfit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Find the vinyl, probably. It's crazy how we all wanted to be Michael Jackson. No, Everybody no. got the glove. Did you, did you ever have a glove, Mike? I didn't have the glove. I always had the high water pants. No. <laughs> With the white socks? Um, no, my um, silk socks were always high water. <laughs> you said, Mike Tyson people, high watch water your, people watch your shoes. That's what Michael did. Oh. Look at the shoes. You got yeah. the socks with the glitter on it? Well, I didn't have that. You just had regular silk socks. <laughs> with some awesome fucking shoes that I had to show the whole shoes of the world. That's why they high water. Yeah, yeah. So they could focus on your feet, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, yo, you and Mike got something in common. You're a martial artist? You're, you're a boxer? What, what, what are you? What's going uh, on here? When I was younger, we after my dad died, my grandma wanted us to do uh, karate. So we did that for a little while. Mm -hmm. Um and then I kind of just wanted something more aggressive. So I went to mixed martial arts. Oh, I got my ass beat like that two happened. days straight. That happened sometimes. And I was like, okay, I can't do this. So we went to school with uh, Billy Blanks' niece oh, and nephew. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of exercise. <laughs> so what? we went boxing with his brother, Michael Blanks. Mm. Threw up every time after that. I, could, I just didn't have the cardio for it, man. It was <laughs> too much. Shit, so then I, I ended up getting the jiu-jitsu <laughs> under the Gracies. So you respect Mike, right? Oh, you oh, were under the Gracies? Yeah, too? No yeah, way. I studied under uh, Hiron and Henner Gracie, who are the wow. grandsons of uh, Helio Gracie. And they used to win all the time. Now, yeah. Everybody does that now. Yeah, everybody yeah. does that now. It's funny, Mike, how in the beginning of the fine world where it, they didn't have like weight class, so it'd be that like so Gracie cool. against Nuts. like some 300-pound sumo dude. And, and it's always like ground attacks. Yeah. Like, and, and how, Before how they had the vision. Yeah. Blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, is there is there a UFC fighter you like MMA or? Um, I used to follow it like diligently, right? Watching Jim Jones, my family. Jim, John Jones, John yeah. Jones, yeah. man, he's the god. Yeah, there was a lot of great fighters. I mean, I really enjoy like entertaining Khabib, fighters. Khabib, Khabib, Khabib was amazing, yeah. you know, but he was all groundwork a lot, mm. and he would dominate strength wise, grappling. He was just above and beyond. Mm. But sometimes it doesn't make for interesting fights. You know, I think what a lot of people want to see yeah, is blood punching back oh, and yeah, forth, yeah. smashing so, each so other. So the grappling on the ground is like long. And... If you if you studied it and yeah. like when I was training in it, it's so interesting for me to watch. But I think from a, just a general audience uh, perspective, you want to see them fight. Give a man has bullet, he's got to pick them up and throw them with a baby. Really? <laughs> I have not. Show him. Show him. Show him. I was like, yo, Mike, he's 20 years old. Like, <laughs> The guy's like 20, Mike. What are you doing? He thought it was a baby. 
That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I had you no pull that up, please? <laughs> yeah, this guy's bucked out, yo. It, I, he's like, he's so cute. High, high. Yeah, I know he was high, but he thought he was really cute, man. I was like, yo, this guy is a, a man. Like, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so you thought this was a baby? <laughs> He was high. He was high. He was beyond high. Look, 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 look. He picks him up. Like, 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 hey, yo, man. Hey, that's listen, a man. Hey, listen. I don't fucking know, okay? All right. Like, that's a man. Like, when you're kissing those girls on the show and you don't know they're men, that's like that. I didn't know he was a little fucking girl. Damn, you're no good, man. Yo, I love Mike, man. And it was so wow. organic. It was so organic. That's hilarious. That's the most organic, coolest shit I've ever seen in my <laughs> oh, life, man. Nigga. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't think you have the pigeons to show you guys. Oh, oh, wow. That's gangster. Oh, wow. Good mic, yo. Oh, that's, that's so I, nice. That's what I do, brother. Wow. Every day, you let them out and fly like that. Yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool. Do they have a trainer, or do you train them? I train them by, there's people there that know how to fly birds. Look how beautiful my birds are. Wow. How do you train them? <laughs> they love me. <laughs> they love me. As soon as I come to the thing, they run, see, they come right to me. Wow. Is it like treat based? Is it click based? Food. Food. Wow. I got a photo for you. Oh. <laughs> what do you guys do? I just sort of like the mic. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. <laughs> I want to, uh, you know, uh, you know, I know Prince meets a lot of liars and BSers. Ah, 100%. You know, I'm just some, like, random DJ that DJ for 50 Cent Eminem. And... Show some of your skills. Show what you would do if you were DJing. Uh, right just... <laughs> the songs you would play. Uh, I just press buttons. I'd be mean, a hockey song, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, get the crowd going. I'm definitely wow. going to be Oh, crazy. Look at that. Wow. And that was in Bahrain. You were next door. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> you were literally next door. That's crazy. So the thing is, he had the shorts, and then he went back to the crib, and he came back as Michael Jackson, like the glitter yeah, yeah. and everything. And then I got him so comfortable, he took photos of everybody. Tyson Bregford, like random homies. The only thing I was really mad is my friend didn't press record on the camera. Uh, like he didn't film it. He, just took, he had a camera, so he just took photos. Dang. And the Rolling dang. Stone, I, you know, he was like hiding yeah, from the yeah. media. My photo was the only one in Rolling Stone that year when they were trying to find him. Only one. In That's crazy. Look That's at my crazy. Whack ass chain. Small world, man. That's really <laughs> nuts. Whack. Look at that whack. 8X polo shirt. You're like, <laughs> That's so cringy. Thank yo. And I look like Nick Cannon. <laughs> hey, put my pictures in with Michael. I'm getting jealous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, my. You know, because he my, walked Mike out with take you, right? my shot now. <laughs> yeah, like, no, Mike would take my shot. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Mike, Can't this have your moment. show, Mike. This is your show, Mike. <laughs> Man. And Mike got mad photos of Mike. You see? Crazy. Mike chilling. got mad photos Crazy. of Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Just chilling. Mike got the gangster photos. Wow. Now, if I remember correctly, it's the one he walked out with everybody at that time. That, that was an amazing shot. That was. That like that should be framed. Wow. Look at those. Look how young I am. Crazy. Wow. <laughs> Yo, Mike, I hate you. Wow. Don't be, wow. Don't be jealous, bro. Stop I hating. Photo, Mike. Mike, I Why are people hating so much? I don't care, man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right people just hate. Look at that one. Look at this Monopoly. Oh, look, they're hating wow. about that. Wow. All the mics. That's crazy. Look, look, that. Put that on look at that. That's it. So, this is the infamous shot. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, my daughter's killing me. She said, Magic is cooler than me. Yeah, Eddie's cooler. She said, <laughs> what? And she said, but, um, she said um, Madonna's my right hand. She said, Madonna's cool. And know what she said about me? I look like the butler. Look at <laughs> and she was right. Look, she was fucking right. I look like the butler. Everybody's a baller, and I look like a butler. Make it big. Make it bigger. No, I don't know no, what it is. No, no it's, it's not, not real. real. But my daughter, my, my daughter said, Mike, Dad, you look like the butler. <laughs> look at that. I look like the fucking butler, for real. Mike is gangster, Driver. man. Look, they got Prince and all those people. Hey, my, my, my daughter said, look at the oh, fur. Man. He got the coat. And you look like a butler, Dad. <laughs> Do your kids know, like, the scale and magnitude of what Listen, you've done? Right? My kids, um... My kids like to bust my chop. <laughs> my kids like to bust my chop. But isn't it crazy that when you're stamped and by knowing Mike, you become like this weird, like this unique individual. People look at you different. Yeah. My one photo, people think it's bugged out. Yeah. But with yeah. him, it must think he's like, 
I mean, just based off of his own career, though, not because he met my dad. Yeah, you know but, what I mean? That like, ain't going that like. like that too. But listen, you'd be surprised how people say you inspired me. That inspired me, and I'm champ of the world to meet him. Wow. I mean, I've been watching him ever since I was in the gutter. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. And now you know him. <laughs> like, <laughs> now you do it. Damn. Isn't it bugged out that you had uh, Macaulay Culkin and Elizabeth Taylor as godparents? Yeah. How does that feel? Elizabeth well, yeah, Taylor. tell me about that stuff, man. So, um, I believe Macaulay Culkin is my sister's godfather. Mm-hmm. Marlon Brando was my godfather. So, wow. the godfather on, was my godfather. Pretty he was crazy. an interesting guy, Pretty, right? Bro, <laughs> Pretty crazy. The wildest. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very interesting, you know. I mean, I think. Did you hang around them? I did. I, when he was uh, older, he used to come over to yeah. uh, Neverland a lot. My dad bought him an. He was, listen, he couldn't go out no way either. Yeah. They mob him. Yeah. Oh man. But uh, and then Elizabeth Taylor was a good friend of my dad, you know. So I spent a little bit of time. I met with her, her before too. Yeah, yeah. How about uh, Diana Ross? You know, I mean, like, she's a really nice lady. Uh, good I friend bet. of my dad. Yeah, yeah. I bet. After my dad died, you know, she was actually in my dad's will. If my grandma couldn't take care of us, then she, oh, Diana Ross would have down. taken care wow. of us. Wow. So uh, it was it was really cool to reconnect with her after my dad died and just talk and share stories, you know. But she's a, a really nice lady, really. You hung out with a lot of the classics. Any classics that we don't know, like you know, like the Tina Turners and. Order, like, you know, again, it's it's. Oh, I, I could have, but I don't remember because I at that time I don't even know who I was hanging out with. You know what like, I mean? Your kid could be like randomly with so many people when they're young, and they just they just don't know. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Because they don't have the appreciation, no, right? No. For what? I mean, speaking for myself personally, right? Like I, I was. I remember meeting. Uh, I don't really remember it. I remember after it meeting Nelson Mandela, mm. and everybody was like how important it was, and he put you on his lap, and he was rocking you, and I'm wow. like. Who's Nelson Mandela? You know what I mean? Like, I don't like understand. Him, I him, I like, <laughs> it's crazy. I met him. It was amazing. You know, that's Mike's homie right yeah, there. Yeah. An embarrassing story, actually. You guys might get a kick out of this. Uh, <laughs> oh, snap. My dad was uh, friends with uh, Farrakhan. Oh, that's the homie. Right? Yeah. So, we all, uh, <laughs> when. Yeah, we all, we're all friends with him. This is, this is really <laughs> embarrassing. All right. This is really embarrassing. When I met him as a kid, I think I called him Shaka Khan. <laughs> <laughs> and I had no. And my dad was like, Holy Max. Yeah. Call, <laughs> that was that was bad. You call a leader of like yes, Syria? Yes. Shaka Khan? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, as a kid, y'all, I was like maybe five or six years old. That's but, gigs, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and no idea. No idea. That's amazing. Yo, Shaka Khan is one crazy person too. Man. You met her? Yeah, yeah. She's she's how did you make her? What was you? She was at Sirius X. She came to Sirius XM and then uh she was walking by. I I begged her for a flick, but she loves fifty cent. Wow. Yeah. So I thought she was gonna talk like nice. You know how you know how Mike talks nice on the show, very eloquently, no cursing. She was like, "What the fuck is that nigga? I've been looking for that nigga." I was like, "Shaka, damn!" And that's it. I put, I gave her fifty cent cell number. I said, "Don't kill the messenger. Don't kill the photo guy." <laughs> I gave her fifty number, and then they did their thing. Next thing I see her at fifty somewhere at some. Wow. Day. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. I actually put fifty together with Mike when I was in Bahrain because he oh, was shooting. Really? He was shooting a movie in uh, Morocco. With some army movie, so I knew he was in that side of the world. So I really got him offset. He was pissed off. I gave Mike the phone, I put, and I say, I say, yo, fifty, yo, I found your lost brother. He was like, the fuck you talking about, nigga? I'm fuck you up, nigga? <laughs> Took me offset. Somebody told me it's an emergency, so I put it together. Hey, he was like, yeah. Michael's yeah. like, what's up, fifty? Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> The fact that he 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 messes with Eminem, yeah, yeah, because because you know Eminem did the videos like mocking yeah. him and stuff like that. So I didn't really want to let him know that I work with Eminem, yeah, because I thought he was gonna kill me and stuff. But he he really respected the fact that that's when Eminem retired. Yeah. So the first thing he said, he was like, "Yo, what's up with this retirement with Eminem? He really retired?" And I was like, "Yeah, he retired. Yeah, I mean he's, he's out, but but he really like respected him. But when I put them both on the phone." The phone, you know, back then it was like twenty dollars a second. I was like, "Yo, man, I know this is some legendary shit." <laughs> Y'all ain't get the fuck off my phone, yo. Yeah. It's like twenty dollars a second. This is like, I'm not, I don't have no plan. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then when I got back off, he was like, "Fuck you," and then hung up on me because, <laughs> because I met Mike before him. Damn. Yeah, pity's crazy. Damn. But thank God that, that that was I had to put him together. He's yeah, in cancer, yeah. so he's pity. Yeah. He pity. I had to put him together. And then we were supposed to do records and stuff, and then you know, so. In the mixtape days, he I was gonna get Mike to do a hook. Okay. So that's why when uh um, what's his name came like all these people came to do like work with Mike. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a studio all day mm-hmm. in Bahrain. 
So, um, John, what was his name? John Legend came out of nowhere. No way. Yeah, so it was just What random. happened to I see a bull? What happened I to have it for you. Yeah. I need it right now. So, I'm dying. I'm dying. What the, what the Do fuck? you want to give your gift to um, our president? Well, we can give it to him. We'll give it to him. <laughs> So so we were supposed to do a hook, but I think the PR on Mike's side was so excited that they were going to work with 50. They put a press release out that 50 Cent and Michael Jackson was going to come out with a song. R.I.P. Chris Lighty. Chris Lighty's team, Violator, put out a joint where Michael Jackson and 50 Cent is not doing a song. Oh, damn. So, but it was supposed to be a secret, and then he passed away. Mm. It's a wrap. That's hey, crazy. Friend. Um, they wanted me to give you this cheap bag from Tyson 2.0. What's in there, Mike? They have a lot of goodies in there. What's in there, Mike? <laughs> thank you, thank you. What's oh, in wow. there? Oh, wow. Dynamite cookies. Ooh. Yeah. Listen, she bangs, she bangs. Can't keep them off the shelf. <laughs> toad? Oh, Toad. That Dynamite cookie's new, right? Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Oh, <laughs> Mike boy. Tyson bites. Oh, there's no After Holyfield. Holyfield. <laughs> That's hilarious. And it's a bit. It's a bit. It's a yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I can't keep it on. Listen. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. You're selling that. like crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Brother Prince. Look at this. See this? Yes. This camera right here. See it? Yes. There's millions and millions and millions and millions of people watching you right now. Let them know how to see you again and get in contact with you. Oh, oh, I got to shout myself out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can find me on uh, social media on Instagram. Uh, Twitter, I think it's Prince Jackson for both. Twitter is like Prince M J J J A X O N. I don't, I'm not on Twitter. Instagram is no. a spot. I have one, but I forgot the password. You on thread? So. You on thread, right? Nah, I mean I hate social media to yeah, be okay, honest, cool. but Instagram's my thing. Uh, Heal Los Angeles, we have Instagram. Heal L A F D N mm. website, Instagram, Twitter, um, and yeah, that's kind of that's, that's where to hit, that's where to I find just me. I just followed you. How do you live your day? What what do you do? Like when you leave here, what do you do? Uh, I have two dogs. I really, I want to have okay. more animals. They're pit bulls. I, I rescued them. Oh, wow. uh, so whatever you can find, really. Um, but they're they're really nice inside my house. Outside of the house, they're you gotta, like, they're whoa. horrible with other people. With, mostly a, with each other. I have other. a golden doodle. Oh really? My cousins just got them. Mar they're really good. What is that? Golden doodle. A poodle a, and a golden. Show them the dog, they're please. Yeah. Okay. How heavy is yours? Uh -huh. Mars. Mars. How heavy is your dog? My dog is big. Really? Like 60, the... 70 pounds? Yeah. A yeah, golden yeah, doodle. Because we saw it was small. We thought we were getting the small one. We got the big one. But we were so happy oh, that we wow. got him. Yeah. We are so oh happy we got him. They're gentle dogs too, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. All the best in the world. Eating your cake. That's crazy. Yeah, he's <laughs> eating my cake. That's, <laughs> that's Mars. No way. Wow. My wow. Baby. Let's put um, Mike and Mars together. Oh, <laughs> look at me right here with Mars. I love wow. that dog. That's awesome. That's awesome. You're gonna make me cry now. Yeah. <laughs> I love dogs. Love dogs. I want to get goats and chickens. I want to oh. kind of expand to it. I don't. I wouldn't do the exotic animals. They're just too much work. Like a Komodo you know dragon. I mean? or something. Oh, no, I actually used to own a Komodo dragon's cousin. Uh, it's the like there's the Komodo dragon and the third largest lizard is the Nile monitor lizard really? and I had two of them in the house one of them killed the other one and no the shit, one that survived became like tip tail to tail or tip was this long wow and I'd come home and everybody'd be running around <laughs> terrified because it got out of its cage and nobody <laughs> would grab it so I'd have to like suit up in a leather some, jacket and yeah. gloves and I've been whipped in the face you did some card dance yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> But uh, I've had anacondas and snakes. They're just reptiles. Don't have that emotional connection. Yeah. That, uh, birds. I had. I had a. We had a bunch of birds in Neverland. But I had a parrot. And I, uh, birds are so intelligent. It's mm. just a weird way of expressing. It's not like dogs or cats. It's. I don't know how to explain it. But how do you, you, how do you talk to your birds, Mike? Do you be like? Bark, 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 bark. How do you do it? As soon as I come in the cool, they all attack the screen. Wow. <laughs> they don't wake me get out. It's like crazy. Yeah. Can you imagine that? I gotta experience that. I gotta take me to the It's nuts. Tent. We used to have a birdhouse at Neverland. I'm sure. Did you go see it when you were over there? I don't remember, but I knew it had a lot of shit. A lot of shit. It was a. You have a, a rhino. That, they had everything. A crazy a stuff. Rhino. And they would just walk around, not always in cages. Like the elephants and the giraffes would just be going on walks. You may wake up one day and, and a there's a giraffe, giraffe or an elephant there. That's it's crazy. So that's like an amazing life. Oh, it's. I found some footage of my childhood recently where we. Uh, I'm walking and feeding an elephant in front of the lake, you know, wow. and that's literally right outside the front of the house. It's a crazy, crazy Mike, job. Mike, Mike lived like this old magnets back in the 1890s. Yeah, you know Xanadu that? type of yeah. thing. <laughs>
Did you cry when you, you know, you lost the property or did you, did you so actually, it? yeah, you know, it did, hated to see it go. Um, for me personally, it's just an unrealistic property to manage and it, I don't want to put any blame out there on anyone, but mm. it, you know, it just, some mistakes were made. It was not a, a, it didn't make sense for us to keep it, but we got very lucky in the sense that one of my dad's good friends bought it. Oh, okay. And so what he did is, uh, he put the property back to what it used to be and he uses it for what my dad intended it to be used for. He brings kids and families and oh, they come and thing. they enjoy the rides. Exactly the yeah. same thing. So he re he rebuilt the train station. I was up there uh, actually for my birthday, not oh, too wow. long ago. I just like to go up there and spend time at the property. How much is it, how much is it to maintain Neverland? Yeah. Um, so I, the numbers that I was told, I think my dad had a payroll for like 2 million a month. No way. For what, at, when it was at its peak. You're talking about 100 employees, almost 200 employees maybe. Animals, food, staff. Why didn't he want to live like a god? He's living, oh, man. man. Crazy. Two million a month. Yeah. Though. And, you know, after he died and we weren't living there, you still have to do fire maintenance. It's 2,700 acres of land. You, I mean, you would go up to, we would go up to the highest point called what? Mount Catherine after his mom, my grandma, and you'd look out. And it was like a Lion King moment where everything the, the light touches is yours. You literally cannot see the property line. It is insane. I was in, because, you know, 50 bought Mike's house. And I remember the, 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 the grass, the, the, the grass bill, like all that maintenance. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like hundreds of thousands of dollars it's a month. It's ridiculous. Like, I don't even know how you even did that, Mike. That was, I mean, obviously I knew how you did it, but. 50 was like, hell no. Yeah, yeah he had his uncle out there, like, <laughs> driving around, cutting the shit. Like, well, Rick Ross cuts his own grass. He bought that big-ass tractor, I was, right? I was so poor, I wanted to be somebody. I thought that was being somebody. <laughs> yeah. You ever ask your family what's up with jerry curls? Like, what was, I mean, was it, like, really popping like that back oh, then? Oh, man. Everybody had wet-ass jerry curls. Yeah. But they was rocking it. Like, super wet. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, it was to a point where it was, like, drizzling everywhere. Yeah. Like, like, did you have a Jerry Curl with like back in the day? Like, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> How was life like with the whole family, like living in one spot though, like before the Neverland and all that? Did he tell you about that stuff? Uh, oh yeah. Oh, well, I mean, so you, you got to remember, my family came from Gary, Indiana, yeah, yeah. and oh, they man. grew Hood. up in a house that was about probably the size of this room. The whole Go to Gary house. Now, see how it looks. It what? is crazy. Scary. It, yeah, it's very scary down there. There's like twelve of them, and they all in that yep. one little spot. Yep. It was four rooms, and you know, I think my aunts would sleep on the couch. My uncles had triple bunk beds sleeping in there. I never heard of that. <laughs> no, crazy. <laughs> Crazy. When I was in prison in Indiana, right, everybody hated those guys from Gary because they were grimy. Wow. They didn't like the Gary guy. It's crazy. I think in 2003, one of the last times, they actually had a KKK rally. Almost no right in front of the house. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's where Clank came from. Yeah. yeah. It's it, it's a it's a different world out there. But when they in nineteen like seventy, sixty nine, they moved to LA. Seventy they moved into Havenhurst. Well, the media is the worst. The media Horrible. is killing his ass. Horrible. Yeah, I mean, they've never yeah. been really friendly to him, but I think it's when you get to a certain... I just didn't care. I just wanted to hear him perform. Yeah. So you didn't, I, didn't, you didn't listen to all that. No, I just wanted to see him. Stuff. I just wanted to see him. I wanted yeah. to be close to him. He was just magic when I first met him. You know, there, there's always that conspiracy <clears throat> with the record labels was against him because he actually spoke out yeah. about... He's the first one to like go at the industry with the yeah. splits. And, he had to, he had yeah. to. Well, that's the side about him that I want to highlight more, but mm -hmm. it's very difficult to talk about because the king of pop takes over everything. But as a businessman, he was so smart. He understood value where it came from in the music industry. He understood that his brand as Michael Jackson meant more than what the record labels were giving him. So he used that to leverage more out of it. And I think by the time mm. Thriller came out, he had the highest royalty rate of any artist at that point. Wow. And then he was owning his he masters. Had, he had ego about that too. Exactly. What? Because he took a corporate co a, a corporate company to the cleaners. And can you Nobody had ever <clears throat> done that. All his heroes, Jackie Wilson and James Brown, those guys <clears throat> got taken advantage of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So here he is, a little black boy from Gary, Indiana, essentially screwing over these record companies, or not even screwing them over, but getting what's rightfully owed to him. Mm. And, I mean, he was very proud of that. <coughs> MTV. MTV didn't play black artists oh, until, wow. I think it was Billie Jean. Wow. I didn't, I didn't, know, I didn't that. know that. Yeah. That's crazy. They were adamant against it. 
The Beatles is that is that real? Like he bought all the yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah. one of the most interesting did that, stories. Did he hand that? Did it come to you after to all the kids? Like uh, so interestingly, what happened? You know, my father. I think he bought it in the eighties. Um, and everybody Beatles. told yeah, everybody told him it was a bad idea. It's been, it's a long right day, <laughs> night, and I was working <laughs> like a dog. Yeah, I like that song too. But everybody told him it was overvalued. It was too much. And he said, no, I want it. I want it. So he got it. And then I don't know when, but at some point he merged it with Sony. And so then it became ATV and Sony and then became Sony ATV. And what that did is that gave him access to all of Sony's artists and Sony had access Who to gave the it him? Paul gave it him? Paul McCartney? You hear different no, stories Paul, about that? I might have sold it to him. But I heard he bought it under Paul. Yeah, I heard I Paul wanted know. to buy it. And he couldn't afford it. And, my, and what my dad told me was that he asked Paul if it was okay oh, wow. if he, he could buy him. it. Oh, wow. And Paul's like, I don't care. That's what my dad said. I've never verified that. I don't know. Well, Paul but he bought it. Mad. Yeah. Oh, I heard he was mad. I heard he was mad. Pretty mad. <laughs> but yeah, then it, it ended up, we're talking about something that over quadruple. Imagine, imagine listen, he's supposed to did that to Michael. Michael did that to him. Yeah. Yeah. Normally it's the white guy to do it to the black <laughs> no, He man. was just ahead of his time. Smart. But that's dangerous, though, to, to, to even make that decision, con considering how these corporations go against like, yeah. certain individuals. Like, yeah. And there's creative accounting, and there's all kinds of things they can do that if you're not on it, if you're not detail-oriented. You weren't scared at that like during those times? I mean, you were young, but were like safety issues precautions? Because your dad was like having issues with other entities that are uncontrollable? Like he was worried about his people kids? People had to threaten him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, like you think phone people, call threat type shit? Like, I'm sure people that he knows had to threaten them. Mm. Yeah. You get to a certain level of power, you know. And, I mean, everything I've been told was told by my dad. But he would come home worried about his safety, about his career, about his assets, because he felt that he was um, pissing off the wrong people. And it was putting a target on his back, either through his Shoot. messages of unity or calling mm -hmm. out other entities for whatever reason it was Ooh. it was putting them on a uh, target on his back all right we gotta wrap it up now you were telling me okay so listen this is another episode of hot boxing and brother um thank you brother prince thank you really i appreciate that amazing yeah, you're gonna like hezbollah <laughs> <laughs> hey this is mike tyson and we're wrapping up another episode of hot boxing i like to thank my brother over here prince jackson and, you know, I'm Mike Tyson, and I have my co-host here. Ooh, good. <laughs> thank, thank you, Brother Prince. And thank this you, is guys. A wrap. <laughs>